Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have another set of crazy revenge stories for you. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave comments so we know what kind of stories you love the most. Build a driveway across someone else's property without permission? Pay the price. Not sure if this is pro enough, but here goes. I was visiting my friend at his dad's house in an area where the land is so steep all the driveways have to switch back up from the main road to the houses. A straight driveway is not an option because it'd be steeper than the building code allows. A few doors down the road, there lived a nice old couple who until recently had a vacant lot next door to them. But the lot had sold and the new owner had started construction on a new house. Unfortunately, the lot was so steep that the owner built his driveway partly on the old couple's land. It was carved out of the hillside with an excavator. This probably wouldn't have been a big deal if the new owner had approached the old couple first and asked nicely, but did he? Well, would I be telling you this story if he had? In fact, the old couple had no idea what was happening until they came home one day to see a huge scar in the hillside snaking up from the main road in front of their house across from the corner of their property and winding upwards to where an excavator was working to prepare the land for their new neighbor's house. They were pretty upset, but being nice, reasonable people, they figured it was an honest mistake, so they went over to talk to the machine operator. He didn't know anything useful, but he was happy to give them the phone number of the new property owner. The old guy gave him a call and politely explained the situation, but his new neighbor, whom he'd never even met, was having none of it. He flat out denied that the driveway crossed the property line, and he was rude enough that the old guy was pretty upset. At this point, the old couple wasn't sure what to do. They double-checked the property pins to make sure they were right, and of course they were, but after further conversation with the new owner, it was clear he was an unreasonable guy who wasn't going to come to the negotiating table willingly. The old couple didn't want to take legal action because that would have been expensive, and Frankly, the damage to their yard was already done. At the same time, they couldn't just let someone walk all over them like that, especially if they were going to be living next door for the foreseeable future. So the situation stewed for a while as construction continued on the new house, until one day when my friend's dad saw the old couple in the neighborhood and they started chatting. Of course, they told him the story about the new jerk neighbor. My friend's dad really likes the old couple, who don't have a mean bone in their bodies, so he was getting pretty upset about the situation, and when he went home, he couldn't get it out of his head. That evening, after a few beers, he had a brilliant idea. He called up the old couple and explained his plan and asked their permission to carry it out. They chuckled and gave him the go-ahead, so he hopped into the rusty old full-size pickup he kept as a second vehicle and drove it over to the old couple's place, where he parked it across the encroaching driveway, making sure it was entirely on their property. The next morning, the work crew arrived bright and early to find that they couldn't drive to the house they were building because some jackass had parked a crappy old F-150 across the driveway. They saw the note in the window with my friend's dad's phone number on it, so they called him to ask WTF. He explained that he had permission from the owners to park there and that, no, he would not move his truck so they could get to work. Furthermore, if anyone attempted to tow the truck, they would be charged with trespassing and theft. There was no way the construction guys were going to haul all their tools up the hill by land, and they didn't want to get into the middle of a legal battle, so they just called the new owner to let him know they'd be taking the day off and that they'd continue to take days off until the property boundary dispute was resolved. The new owner called the old couple in a fury, but the old couple told them the same thing that my friend's dad told the construction workers. Basically, the vehicle was parked on their own property, so if he had a problem with it, he could go F himself. To make an already long story shorter, the new neighbor ranted a while but eventually wanted his house to be built, so the nice old couple ended up with a significant sum of money in exchange for an easement allowing the driveway to pass across the corner of their property. And my friend's dad got several thank you cases of beer and the satisfaction that comes with putting an a-hole in his place. Edits. Phrasing. This occurred in a small town in Canada. For those who think I made it up, thanks for thinking I'm so clever, but judging by the number of similar stories in the comments and people asking if this was in X town, I think this happens pretty often. Not too surprising considering the number of houses built each year in the world. Regarding the legal questions and comments, the reason the guy built the driveway where he did was because it was cheaper and easier than making it all on his land, not because there was no other option. 
so most of your points, if not all, are moot. I'm on mobile, so I can't paint a picture, but imagine two lots next to each other on the uphill side of a road with the property boundary perpendicular to the road. The older couple live on the left when you're looking uphill, the new driveway is for the property on the right, and it snakes up the hill in a roughly S shape. The bottom 50 feet or so of the driveway crosses the old couple's land to reach the road. I'm not sure if any trees were harmed in the making of this post. The driveway was done by the time I saw it, but the couple didn't make that an issue, so I suspect not. And yes, my friend's dad drove after. Why are people so rude to their neighbors? They live right next to you. And our second story. I planted over 5,000 dandelion weeds in my neighbor's garden. Here's some backstory. I have a four-year-old cocker spaniel named Charlie, and he likes to poop. I let him out of my front garden every morning for his toilet routine, same in the evening. We don't have a boundary fence on where my garden and my neighbor's starts beside a row of bushes. Saying this, Charlie hasn't ever crossed or pooped past these bushes. Now every week I collect up said poop before it gets into a disturbing amount. I've been doing this for the past four years to keep my front garden looking good and not too smelly. One day I came home from work to find that my neighbors weren't happy that there was dog poop in my front garden. I instantly went to collect what was there, it wasn't much, and it was nowhere near the boundary of where our gardens meet. Fast forward a week, my neighbor again complained about the dog poop being in my garden. However, this time he threatened to hurt my dog if he continued to poop in my garden. This time I wasn't so nice about it and stated that it's my garden and my dog can do as he pleases. Now I know dog poop can be annoying, but when it's not your garden and there's no smell due to decent airflow and open front garden, is it really justified to threaten a man's dog over some poop? Anyway, after months of this going with petty things and shade being thrown at me every day about having a dog, I decided to declare war on my neighbors. Now, I knew these people pretty well. They just moved in, and we let them use our Wi-Fi for a couple of months until they got theirs all sorted. I picked up a few things about them, and one of them was how OCD they were. They cut back their garden every week and painted the entire bottom layer of the house to match their fence. This was all the fuel I needed to exact my revenge. My first step was to start off small. I knew they liked things to match, so I painted my fence gate bright pink instead of matching it with my fence. This was my first small victory. They hated it so much they begged me to correct the color. So I did. I figured if peace was an option, it was worthwhile. Then began the hate again. I had to come up with something so evil and yet genius that it couldn't be traced back to me. That's when I planted over 5,000 dandelion seeds in their front and back garden. I figured I was in this for the long haul, and I did it under cover of night to make sure to plant them in places not easily mowed. Fast forward three months and their garden was covered in weeds. They grew through the slabbing and were patched all over the garden. It took them three days to clear the weeds and around 100 pounds of weed killer. As someone who loves dandelion greens and fried flowers as well as dandelion wine, you're welcome to come plant 5,000 seeds in my yard any day. And our last story. Steal my petrol? Pay thousands of euros. Background, so I have an a-hole neighbor and his crap-stained family who we always have problems with. When I'm done, I'll add some other shenanigans. This included flinging trash onto our side, putting his dog on our side so it would poop there, and at one point stealing our petrol from our outdoor tank. Now, on with the story. The problem. So two years ago, in April or May, we noticed that the petrol in the tank was going down very quickly, even though the amount we used was very little. After a bit of investigating, we found a pipe had been installed that led to his side of the land. Recently, he got this huge new car that obviously needed a bunch of gas, and it seemed that along with some being used overtime, there were huge amounts used every week, so he was presumably filling his car. To stop him, my dad hatched a plan. Keep in mind, we couldn't call the cops on him as they would do nothing because his nephew was a policeman and we live in Greece, so, you know, family ties and stuff. Planning. Since this was during the summer, we waited until he went on holiday. He was quite rich, and then disconnected our house from the pipes so there would be no chance of him suspecting anything. We kept the charade up until he came back and went back to using our petrol. We noticed a pattern to when he used our petrol to fill his car, I think every four to five days, and we used this to our advantage. The revenge. The day before he filled up, we topped it up with soap water and mixed it around in order to make it petrol colored. 
with any petrol left over and we removed just enough for it to have the same color. For those of you who don't know, water in the gas tank is a no-no and it causes lots of damage that's very expensive. So this completely destroyed his gas tank and the damage was so great it was cheaper to sell his car. Now at that time it was summer, so we didn't need gas to heat up water due to the water in his heating system as it was plugged into our tank filled with petrol water mixture. The metal started eroding and rusting or something and water made it through the pipes so it was in contact with the concrete which made it moldy and weak. A few months later it made it through the concrete and a piece of the ceiling collapsed and all the petrol water flooded in, obviously costing him a lot of money to fix as well as the money lost with the car and the heating system. I can only assume it was in the thousands. This is the definition of a good revenge story. Good revenge and believable. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end and I'll see you in the next one.